Hey everyone, welcome to Surfax Learning Channel. For today's video, patuloy pa rin po nating pag-aaralan patungkol po sa kinematics. At this point ay pag-aaralan po natin ang relative velocity, projectile motion, and circular motion. Bago po natin pag-aralan yan, or pero bago po natin pag-aralan yan, i-review po muna muli natin paano nga ba kumuha ng slope. How to determine the slope of the line given two points. At kung bago ka sa channel na ito, at hindi ka pa nakapag-subscribe, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell all para updated ka sa mga susunod ko pong video lessons. Happy learning, everyone. This is it. Oh, I finally found this channel. Learning. Okay. So, kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, bago po tayo dumako sa relative velocity, projectile motion, and circular motion, ay i-review po muna natin kung paano nga ba kumuha how to find the slope of the graph. For example, you are asked here uh, at time 2 seconds and 14 seconds. So, let me draw first the Cartesian plane. Or I let me use this. And Oh. Sobrang malaki ah. Okay. Erase, erase. Oh, a do. Okay. So this is our, of course, y coordinate, and this is your x. And our the de uh, dependent variable here is distance. Kaya ilalagay po natin dito si distance. Ito natin ilalagay si distance dahil siya ay dependent variable. 35 meters thirty meters 25 meters 20 meters 15 meters 10 meters ay sorry meters and finally 5 meters syempre kailangan po natin itapat yan Yan. Parang ano. And then, patay ng ibang color. Dito naman, ilagay natin ang time, which is our independent variable. Ayan. 
So here you have two seconds, four seconds, six seconds, eight seconds, ten seconds, twelve seconds. And 14 seconds. Okay. Lagyan na natin ngayon ng ano. Gawin uh, natin green yung kanyang ano. So this is your 35. This is your 30. This is your 25. Ang kutang laki kasi ng ano. This is your 20. Your 15. Your 10. And 5 meters. And this is your 2 seconds. 4 5, 6 pala, 8, 10, 12, and 14. Okay. So, syempre, plaplak natin dito yung at time, 2 seconds and 14 seconds. So, remember, in getting the slope, to get the slope, you will use the formula M. Bakit naging makapal yung aking ano? Pang sulat. Gusto ko yung pin lang. Pin. Pin lang. Pin ko na eh is equal to ups rice over run So, paano ba yung rise over run? So, yan po yung ating slope expression. So, yung ating time na 2 seconds is here. <clears throat> Gawa po tayo ng... Ayan. So, 2 seconds and 14 seconds. So, we will start at rise first hanggang dun sa tapat ng 14 okay let me use color blue erase ko muna ito ay erase ko muna tong rice na to erase muna okay rice Hanggang, yan, ito po yung rice po natin. So, and that is 35 minus 5 is equal to 30 yung ating rice. Okay. Equals 30. Paano na ko yung 30? 
35 minus 5. Okay? And the next is run. So you will run from here. Run. Up to 0.14 seconds. Ayan. So that is... 14 minus 2 is 12. So your run is 12. And therefore, your M is equal to 30 divided 12. 30 divided by 12. What's your answer? That is 2.5. What's the unit measure? Remember, ang unit measure po natin ng rice is meters and run is seconds. Therefore, dividing 30 divided by 12 will have a unit of meters per seconds. So this is meters and this is seconds. Pag naman kasi maingay yung ano? Opo. Okay? So, yan po yung ating rise and run of getting the slope of the graph given two points. Any questions? All right, let's proceed. Let me erase now these write-ups, all the drawings I have. And let me proceed to the next slide. At this point, pag-usapan naman po natin yung relative velocity, projectile motion, and circular motion. Our most essential learning competency here, which is from number 14, milk 14 to 18, is to describe motion using the concept of relative velocities of uh, 1D and 2D, one-dimensional and two-dimensional. Reduce the consequences of the independence of vertical and horizontal components of projectile motion. Calculate range, time of flight, and maximum height of projectiles. Infer quantities associated with circular motion such as tangential velocity. And then centripetal acceleration, tangential acceleration, reduce and curvature. Solve problems involving two-dimensional motion in context such as but not limited to ledge jumping, movie stand, basketball, safe locations, during fireworks displays, and perishable. Okay? Pag-usapan po muna natin yung relative motion. Relative motion, of course, it needs frames, frames of reference. Ito po ay part po ng classical relativity and special, special relativity. Uh, we do believe that all motion is relative. That all motion is measured with respect to a particular frame of reference. When we say frame of reference, it is a system for specifying the precise location of the object in space and time. Background against which motion is measured and 
an object velocity measured in an in one reference frame can be completely different when it is measured from another reference frame. So for example, uh, you are walking along the path and together with you is a man as well who are riding a bike bicycle. So, in terms of getting the velocity with respect to the bike, so yung, yung reference frame is ikaw muna. Pero kung si biker naman ang tatanungin, ano yung velocity niya with respect to you, siya naman yung frame of reference. So, relative velocities needs to distinguish velocities as measured in different frames of reference. So, kailangan niyang i-distinguish yung velocity as measured in different frames of reference. Usually uses subscript such as two let letters. Uh, like reading as velocity of first letter or first point or uh, reference point and the second letter. Okay? As expressed as V, example, ito po yung ating ano, the velocity of A and C is equal to the velocity of point A or object A and B plus the velocity of object B and C. So, depende kasi sa uh, position and direction as well. For instance, if the direction is opposing, you can have the velocity of A and B is equals to, then you will get the opposite velocity, which is referring to a negative for your for your ano, for your reference uh, for your direction that's why you have here negative velocity of uh, position or uh, b and a since velocity is vector quantity rules of vector addition and vector resolution will apply here example you are walking backward in a bus, but a rate of one meters per second. Relative to the earth. But bus is moving forward at 19 meters per second. What is your velocity relative to the bus and other passenger on the bus? Ano yung magiging velocity mo relative to the bus? And so sim sim simple. So let us assume na ito po yung bus. Wait lang. Let us have a... Oh, bakit hindi na lang ito? Ayan. Ayan po yung bus. Lagyan natin ng gulong yung bus. Ayan. Ayan yung bus. Okay. At yung direction ni bus ay papunta dito. Ngayon, itong bus mayroong pinto syempre. Lagyan natin ng pinto yung bus. Okay. 
Okay. Ayan. Oops, wait lang. And then, syempre, ito yung ground. Ito yung ground, syempre. I mean, ito yung ground. Sumakay ka. Ikaw ay sumakay sa bus. Dito. Sumakay ka sa bus. Dito ka sa first door. Dumaan. Nandito ka na ngayon. Yan. Color natin. Oops. Ayaw, ayaw, ayaw. Ayan, ikaw yan. Sumakay ka. It so happened na ang bakanting upuan ay nasa Oops. Kaya naglakad ka papunta sa sa likod. Siyempre, nakahawak pa. Okay? So, yung, yung direction mo, is going there. Pero relative to the ground. Ang tanong, uh, relative to the earth, the bus is moving forward 19 meters per second. The question is, what is your velocity? We, uh, what is your velocity relative to the bus? and other passenger. So your velocity relative to the bus is If you will follow the formula kanina Oops. Nineteen. Ano na bang iba? Nineteen meters per second. Relative to the bus kasi. And then, since opposing yung direction, plus, ah, plus, the negative, ah, the negative of, one meters per second. And that is equal to, 18 meters per second. Okay? Now, what is your velocity relative to the observer on the side of the road? So, nagkaroon ngayon ng observer sa side ng road. Oh. 
Okay, drawing ulit tayo. So, ito yung observer. Kumakaway pa sa'yo. Okay, what is now your velocity? Relative to the side of the road. So in here, we will use the Pythagorean theorem. C, C is equal to A squared, uh, A raised to the power of 2, hindi pwede, hindi kaya. A squared plus B squared. So C squared. And that is Nineteen meters squared. Okay. So your C, your C squared is equal to, and then get the square root of your C let me use So C, C C X nga lang C is 
is equal to square root of 362. Nineteen point zero three meters per second. Okay. That's it. Okay, naman jan. Now, let's talk about projectile motion. Projectile motion is a two-dimensional -dimension, motion of an object. It's with respect to its vertical and horizontal motion or position. A projectile is an object upon which the only force is gravity. So there are types of projectile motion, the horizontal, the vertical, and Parabolic. Motion of a ball rolling freely along a level surface, horizontal velocity is always constant. And vertical naman, ato horizontal, ha, velocity is always constant. However, vertical motion is freely, is a free falling of motion or a free fall motion of an object due to the force of gravity. The vertical component of velocity changes with time. So, nagbabago yung yung with respect to time. Nagbabago yung kanyang vertical component with respect to time. Parabolic are path traced by an object accelerating only in the vertical direction while moving at constant horizontal velocity. So, for instance, launching a cannonball is an example of projectile motion. Uh, serving a volleyball, basketball, shooting, pitch. A three-point shooting is an example of projectile motion. To compute for the X component, we have X or X sub F or the final component is equals to X sub I or the initial component plus the velocity of final and initial times time. However, for Y component, you have Y sub F or the final component of Y and Y sub I or the initial component of Y plus the velocity of initial and final of Y or initial component of y times time minus one half of acceleration due to gravity, which is constant, equal to 9.8 meters per second squared times the square of time. And then to get the velocity here, you have the y component or the final y component squared is equal to uh, v or velocity initial component squared or the square of initial component of y minus 2 times acceleration due to gravity times the change in y. And therefore, your v or velocity is equal to the final component of y times or which is equal to the v or velocity of initial component of y minus acceleration due to gravity times time. Since we are talking about vectors, we can also express this as a vectors such as uh, v or velocity is equal to initial component of x 
or velocity sub initial component of x is equal to the velocity in the, or initial velocity cosine theta and the velocity initial component of y is equal to initial the velocity of or initial velocity sine theta Okay. Uh, pasensya na kung may maririnig kayong background ng klaklasik kasi si Miss Lois. So, in this concept, dapat maging ano ka rin, alert to determine the given of a the given of a problem. Kaya dapat impo, uh, kaya importante na alam mo yung given eh. Identify mo muna yung given. For you to know what expression will you use. For you to find out of what is asked. Kalimbawa, you are asked to get the time, the highest time of flight of a certain object shown for it to project uh, motion, uh, for it to project Either you can use basically time is equal to the velocity of that ball over its acceleration due to gravity. Right? But then if you are asked when it returns, what will happen? How long will it take? So you will just get the double of the velocity times uh, over the acceleration due to gravity. Anyways, what are the factors would affect projectile motion? Of course, it's angle or angle and the initial velocity. For example, in this illustration, you have here the angle theta and the initial velocity is 60 meters per second. So that's the factor. And then if we will ask how long it will take for that object to get down. So, pag sinabing how long, we're talking about time. And how long will this object reach the highest, the maximum height? So, pag ang pinag-usapan po natin is the maximum height, you, your T, ay yung, yung gagamitin po nating time dito, is equals to T is equals to VI or initial velocity over G. So that is equal to ano yung G natin? Constant 9.8 meters per second squared. That is equal to ito yung T ah, yung T So that is equal to 60 meters per second divided by 9.8 meters Okay, lagi natin dito para over nine point eight meters per second squared squared yena 
Yung mahirap pag ano sa PowerPoint, maglagay ng square. Square. So, that is equal to 60 divided by 9.8 equals 6.12. equals 6.12. Here, we can cancel out we can cancel out meters per second. Diba? Kasi we, when we divide, we cancel unit measure. So cancel meters per second and meters per second you will notice, dalawa yung, se, eh, yung unit na time natin dito. Kaya may matitira pang isang S at yun yung magiging unit measure mo ng iyong final answer. Seconds. And this is your time. Okay? T is equal to 6.12. So, dito yan. The, uh, the time it takes to reach the highest position. Okay? What if you're asked what will be the distance? What will be the distance from this, from the ground up to here? Ano yung distance niya? Ano yung magiging distance niya from here, from the ground, up to here? So, for you to get the distance, you will just use D is equal to initial velocity squared, VI squared, VI squared yan eh over 2 times G. Okay? Initial velocity over 2 times G. So, kung kukunin po natin yung distance mula dito sa ground hanggang dun sa pinakahayas, pinakapik, So, sige, let's have this. Your initial velocity on the given is 60 meters. So, you have 60 meters per second. Since we're talking about velocity, over, oops, mali. over 2 times 9.8 meters per second. 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. And then that is equal to dito na natin ilagay and 60 Ah, wait lang. 
Kasi 6. Ito pala ay may squared pa. Ito pala nagtatakaw pa. Ano mo po? Ayan ay may ano pa. Meron pa ang exponent. Kasi v ay squared. So, your v ay squared is like that. So, here, 60. 60 times 60 or v ay squared. Three thousand six hundred, three thousand six hundred meter squared per second squared. Per second squared. All right. Okay, tama. Per second squared. Over. 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 2 times 9.8. 2 times 9.8 equals 19.6 meters per second squared. 10.6 meters per second squared. Ayan. So you will notice, pwede kayo mag-cancel out dito ng unit measure. Na meters. Ayan. At mayroong matitirang isang m dito. Kasi m squared yan eh. May matitirang isang m. Okay, therefore, divide 3,600, 3,600, divide 19.6 equals 183.67. Oops, sorry, sorry. Your D is equal to 183.67 natirang unit measure is M. This is now your distance ng ball ay ng object na to from here. Okay? So, what if the ball returns? Preferably, the displacement is equal to zero. But how about the time? The time is just 2v over or 2 times initial velocity over acceleration due to gravity. So, that is 2 times 60 divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. That is the return of the object, ito na, yung time from here up to here is 2V, 2V. So ito kanina, VI. Di ba? VI, ah, initial velocity lang. Ngayon naman, pag return, to return the ball or the object, you will now, ito ha, yung dito. Your time is equal to 2VI over G. Okay? Ito, yung time dito is T is equal to initial velocity over G. Okay? And then, yung distance, yung distance na to, yung distance na yan, 
will have d is equal to v squared or vi squared initial velocity squared over 2 g 2 times acceleration due to gravity remember that g or acceleration due to gravity of earth is 9.8 meters per second squared constant value po yan okay so let's proceed let me erase now all of these write-ups Okay, an object is fired from the ground at 100 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. Calculate the horizontal and vertical component of the initial velocity after 2.0 seconds. How far has the object traveled in the horizontal direction? And how is the how high is the object at this point? So up to you to use this or yung inano ko kanina sa inyo. So this is the solution. The first question is calculate the horizontal and vertical component of the initial velocity. So that's the horizontal. This is the horizontal component. And this is the vertical component, 50 meters per second and 80 meters per second. So initial velocity natin kanina is 100 meters per second. Ayan, 100 meters per second times the cosine of the angle, 30 degrees. So 100 meters kunin mo muna yung cosine ng 30 times 100, that is 87 meters per second for our horizontal. And then, for our vertical, initial velocity times sine theta. Yun po yung nandito sa ating ano kanina. Initial velocity times sine theta. Kagaya ng sinabi ko, kailangan mong tingnan ang given for you to know what expression will you use to find what is asked. Okay, so dito, your initial velocity again is 100 meters per second times the, the given angle is 30 degrees. So sine 30 times 100 is 50 meters per second. Then the second question, after 2.0 seconds, how far has the object traveled in the horizontal direction? Horizontal, sa x-axis at 2.0 seconds. So you will use initial velocity is equals to the change of x over change of time. So your horizontal component is 87 meters per second. The velocity of your horizontal component is 87 meters per second. Uh, nakuha mo to dito sa, part, sa first question kanina. Times the time na 2.0 canceled out yung s dito kaya meron kayong meron kang 174 meters okay dahil na cancel out tong unit measure na second kaya ang natirang unit measure is meters and then the last question How high is the object at this point? How high? So vertical component, the time of the vertical component, delta y is equal to initial 
velocity of y times a change in time plus one half say affected ng gravitational anong gravity times the change of time squared. Yun po yung nandito sa ating formula. Okay? So by substitution, your initial velocity sa vertical component is 50 meters, ayan po, times the time 2.0 plus one half of the acceleration due to gravity times time itself. So that's how it goes. So 50 meters, sulat ko na lang. Ayan, 50 meters times 2. 2 times 50 100. So this is 100. Meters. Meter na lang matitira. Plus. One half. One half. 9.8 times. 9.8 times 2. 9.8 times 2 equals 19.6 times 19.6. 19.6 meters. Ah, no, 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 no. Kasi 2 squared pala, 2 squared. So, one half nine point eight nine point eight meters per second squared times two point zero squared is four point zero s squared. Okay, so ito kasi makakancel daw. Itong unit measure na to. Itong S. Makakancel daw yan. Kaya 100 meters. And then, ito na muna. 9.8 times 4.0. So makakancel out din itong S dito. Ayan. So, kaya ang matitira, meter na lang. So, 100 meters plus ay plus 9.8 times 4 tama 9.8 times 4 equals 39.2 plus 1 half times 39.2 meters okay so dito natin ilagay ha medyo wala ng space ito na lang 100 meters plus 1 times 39.2 divide 2 39.2 divided by 2 equals 19.6. So 19.6 meters. 
19.6 meters. That is equal to plus 100 equals to 119.6 meters. 119.6 meters. And this is your Y. This is sure. Delta Y. Okay. Yeah. Let me clear another the drawings. <sighs> All right. So much for that. Let's proceed to circular motion. So speaking of circular motion, we can see it in different places like amusement parks. Uh, have you right a parish well? So the parish, the parish well, it, work circularly, which is a basic example of circular motion. Why somebody needs to know about circular motion? Otherwise, we wouldn't go on, a, on the slides for sure, like space station, satellites, live from overseas or planets, comets, and moons. Speaking of uniform circular motion, velocity is a vector. Since velocity is a vector, it has both direction and magnitude. In a simple case, direction is always constant and magnitude changes. It, it, and it refers to linear motion when direction is constant and the magnitude changes. But this point, the magnitude is constant and the direction is continually changes. Kasi when, when an object moves circularly, syempre, ang magnitude niya is constant naman talaga. Pero because of it moves circularly, definitely yung direction niya will change. So take a look at this circle. Let's have a circle, ha? Huh? Yan. When an object moves here, at this point, um, the direction is going here. Huh? And here, the direction is going here. And here, the direction is going here. And here, the direction is going here. So even here, the direction is going up here. But the magnitude will probably constant, only the direction continually changes. And that is uniform circular motion. So how we locate something on a circle? Paano natin mahanap? yung location ng isang object in a circle, in a circular area. So given uh, its angular theta, yan, if you are asked to locate the location of the star, so the location of the star is at 90 degrees. So, eh, nangyari. At 90 degrees from this, saan na yun? Ayan. From here at x-axis, the location of the star is 90 degrees or 2 or 5 over 2. 
Okay. Hindi ko pa na-erase yung erase na natin ito. Alright. So, y-axis, x-axis, theta is the angular position. And the angular displacement is the change of theta or the angular position is equals to the final theta of minus the initial theta. This is our initial theta and this is our final theta. Note that angles measured clockwise. So clockwise, clockwise are negative. Those angle measured clockwise are negative and angle measured counterclockwise are positive. So papunta doon, positive. Papunta dito, negative. Pababa. Clockwise. Eh. The theta is measured in radians. 2 pi radians is equals to 360 degrees or 1 revolution. So 2 pi regions. So this is 1 pi. Yan, 1 pi. 2 pi, isang buong circle, is 360 degrees yung angle niya. Or equal to the complete revolution. Okay. Alisin natin to. Mahaba-haba na itong ating pinag-uusapan. What is a region? A region is total angle of one rotation times R measured. Region measured relates to displacement along circumference to angular displacement. So how do we locate? Ayan, yung star kanina nasa 90 degrees or phi, pi 2, pi over 2. From theta 0 here, this is theta 0. Ilala mo ba si theta 0 to theta 90. Ayan, theta 90 degrees. We have gone one-fourth of way around. So this is one-fourth of the circle. One-fourth of 2 pi is equals to pi over 2. So one-fourth one of 2 pi or one-fourth of the whole circle is equals to pi over 2. Ayan, may mga multo na po sa aming paligid kaya maririnig niyo po yung alulong ng aso. Kaya huwag kang kukurap. <laughs> If we move around the circle, we change theta. How fast does theta changes? If we move around the circle, we change theta. Ang tanong, how fast does the theta changes? So we have this equation mu. Of the average velocity is equals to the change of theta over the change of time. And our mu here is the limit of the change of time towards zero of delta theta over delta t. Mu is measured in radians per second. For velocity and angular velocity, for circular motion, how far do you travel during the change of time? If you are spinning at the angular velocity, so ito pong symbol niyan is angular velocity. For you to get how far, you have delta theta. Wait lang. Post muna natin. Okay, for you to get how far you travel during the change of time when you when you are spinning at the angular velocity you have this s is equal to change or delta theta r or delta theta or r is equal to 
angular velocity times a change of time times r. And how fast? The speed. V is equals to S over delta T or angular velocity times the radius. So therefore, the velocity with respect to angular velocity, when you are spinning at an angular velocity is equals to angular velocity times its radius. Okay. Question. A child runs around the circular ledge of a fountain which has diameter of 6.5 meters. If, takes, if it takes her 72 seconds to run all the way around, her angular velocity is? Ano yung angular velocity kanina? Uh, ayan, ang kanyang velocity. Delta theta over delta time. So, ayan. Is it A, B, C, or D? Compute for your angular velocity. A city makes a complete revolution every tenth of second. The angular velocity of 0.4 is 0.4. Ano angular velocity? For you to answer that, uh, the time it takes to go one time around a closed path is called period. We need to the average velocity here is the total distance over total time or 2 pi r over t since we're talking about a circular path. Yeah, 2, pa, 2 pi r over the time. So kung ang tanong kanina, a CD makes one complete revolution every tenth of the second. The angular velocity 0.4 is. So 2 pi r over time. That's the angular velocity. Comparing to the velocity of so 2 pi over time is equal to 2 pi times its uh, frequency. Frequency is the number of revolutions per second. F is called the frequency, the number of revolutions or cycle per second. Now, consider an object moving in a circular path of a radius at constant speed. Uh, we're talking about centripetal acceleration. Here, uh, velocity will change. Ayan, kagaya ng sinasabi kanina, the direction always change. And probably, that velocity as well will change, but the magnitude will not. If the change of velocity equal or not equal to zero, then acceleration is also not equal to equal or not equal to zero. Then the net force cannot be zero. To move, to conclude, to move a circular path on an object must have a non-zero not net force acting on it. It is always true if the summation of your force the summation of your force is equals to mass times acceleration. And then, what acceleration will we use here? The velocity of... So the acceleration, of course, we accelerate the uniform acceleration. Not affected by the gravitational, uh, but still depending, it depends pa rin kung na, ano yung position ng circular path. Eh. Depende pa rin kung ano yung position ng circular path. So if the velocity of a particle is tangent to its path, so tangent to the path, for an object moving in uniform circular motion, the acceleration is gradually and inward. So... So the acceleration here, if the velocity 
of a particle is tangent to its path, like this, the acceleration is inward. All three angles, delta, theta, sana ba yung three angles na yan? Ito. Is equals to delta R over R, delta, uh, which is also equal to V times the change of T over R, which is all in all, it, it is equal to the square of velocity times the change of time over R. That is your delta V, yung change of velocity in a circular path pertaining to centripetal acceleration. The velocity is V squared times the change of time over R. Okay, the magnitude of a radial acceleration is A, a radial acceleration, acceleration is equal to V squared over R or equal also to R times its angular velocity squared or ang angular times its velocity. Angular velocity times its velocity. What makes it go around? A particle in a circular motion is accelerating, so there must be a force providing this acceleration, which is the mass times the square of velocity over its radius. For you to know what is that force. So that force is mass times the velocity, the square of the velocity over its radius. Since we are talking about a circular uh, motion. Now, another question. A spider is sitting on a turntable turn that is rotating at 33 uh, RPM radius per meter. The acceleration of acceleration of the spider is A, B, C, or D. Write down your answer on the chat box or comment section. Another example that uh, the motor rotor in an amusement park ride where people stand against the side, katulad po nitong pinapakita dito yan. Uh, people stand against inside a cylinder. Once the cylinder is spinning fast enough, the floor drops out. Now, what force keep the people from falling out the bottom of the cylinder? So, if we will draw it here, FBD, free body diagram. This is our free body diagram or FBD for a person with their back to the wall. So, ito yung wall sa so side na to. It is a force of static friction. So, What force keeps the people from falling out of the bottom of the cylinder? Ang tawag po sa force yun is static friction. Okay? And finally, a coin is placed on a record that is rotating at 33 RPM. Mu of S is equal to 1.1, how far from the center of the record can the coin be placed without having a slip? Ito yung ating free body diagram. Then you have to apply Newton's second law, of, second law which is equal to force times a summation of force to the horizontal component is equal to mass times acceleration are and its radius. And finally, you have the summation of F vertical or equal to Newton times its work, which is equal to the...